Uh, right, let's move on. Phil Egan, good morning to you. How are you doing, lads? I can't believe your Gaelic football team is so shit. Yeah, I mean... How look, am I doing? Is that the oh, right... yes. Yeah. Is that how it works? Keep it going. I'm no, like... I, I was kind of sitting here thinking, I mean, would you be celebrating a win over the Dubs? Because everyone's beating the Dubs these days. Oh. It's true. Six in a row. It's, it's like celebrating beating Liverpool last season. Yeah, exactly. I mean... Look at some of the teams, like even Everton. Shouldn't shouldn't you do it every time you get the opportunity to? Because it might not come around again. Isn't that the other side of this? Possibly. Like... Well, yeah. The, the example there is Everton won at Anfield last season, and who knows when they they'll win there again? They thought that was a new normal. Yeah, but there was no one there to see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, imagine if we. Like, isn't it better that uh, those couple of years that that we had to watch the boring football that Jack O'Connor provided for us at Kildare instead of the good stuff that we have now that the crowds are all able to get there and see it. Yeah, exactly. So as I said about Liverpool last season, if you were going to have a, a season that was a bad one, which they still somehow rescued with a third place finish, but it, that was the time to do it when there was no fans there. They got their act together actually as the fans started to come back. Mm. Remember the last day of the season when they beat Palace to, to secure a top four finish that they actually had 10,000 at Anfield. So... Um, don't waste your bad football on the on the fans. Waste it on the the empty stadiums. Yeah, a good idea. Um, I, uh, before we get into um, Burnley Leicester and the, and the Premier League, we should talk about Crystal Palace last night in the cup. Uh, their young left back was a, an Irish kid, uh, Teo Adaramola, who I think hasn't played that much yet for the first team. But it's a big enough game at this stage of the competition yeah. to be to be getting in. He's um, it was his first start. Played sixty minutes. Yeah, and. You were not festooned with left backs. I mean, maybe, maybe we're playing a right back out of position at left back. But maybe now we have a left back who probably isn't going to play that much in the Premier League for the rest of the season. But certainly is is, um, is being trusted in big moments. Yeah, it, it always excites Irish football fans when they see a young Irish player being thrown into the first team. And people say it's a, it, you know it's the FA Cup, but Crystal Palace are one of those sides where give it a shot because they're safe in the Premier League. I know Southampton and West Ham are playing tonight. There are two other clubs that you would think you have a fair crack. Maybe West Ham, like I know they they probably have their eyes on the, the top four race as well and they're still in the Europa League. But certainly a team like Southampton who are in good form would be targeting FA Cup success. And I would put Crystal Palace in the same bracket. So for Vieira to, to throw him in there, that can only be a good thing. And you know the fact that he, he got over an hour. And Crystal Palace is... Uh, Sellers Park is one of those stadiums that uh, on its night can be absolutely hopping like so great experience for him and um, yeah hopefully the sign of things to come the Ireland squad the, it's going to be interesting to see who he names like I, I don't know if um, any of the players who are in that age group at the moment are close to the Ireland squad for what's going to be a very important campaign from Stephen Kenny's perspective or do you bring them in and show them around and say, this is going to be you this time next year or the year after if you get your head down and get a few games? I don't, what's, the, what's the way to manage that throughput of players? Well, I think like somebody like Daramola, who's you know, he's still a teenager, like his next step is a, is a call up to the 21s. But yeah, there's, there's players in the 21 squad that Stephen Kenny will have definitely earmarked for call ups to the senior squad, whether they're ready. Sometimes you see managers call up players just to train. I remember I know Jack Byrne was on the show yesterday speaking to Nathan and you know he's he's still only 25 but you think back to when Martin O'Neill was in charge I remember Jack Byrne was called in to train with the with the senior squad I think it was it was him and Callum O'Dowd because I remember Jack Byrne came into the press conference this young lad who was uh, on loan over in Holland but was on the books at Manchester City and was taking it all in a stride but just to get that, get a look at them and what they're like against the, the senior players. Well, it, I, we played a clip of Kim Prendergast earlier on who'd been called up to train with the Ireland rugby squad and he yeah. said his brain was fried for the first few days just kind of, oh, these are some of the best players in the world. Like getting that out of the system as early as possible so that when an injury it forces uh, us to pick one of these players and play a game because that, that frequently happens where it's like you come from nowhere, you play a game and maybe you st stick in the squad or maybe you don't afterwards. Um, uh, uh, removing as much of the brain fry as possible would be good. Yeah, absolutely. Also, as well, like if you're Stephen Kenny, you want to see how they adapt to the environment. And I'd say it's almost a case of you look at their behaviour as well. What, not only what they do on the pitch, but off the pitch. You know, do they interact with their teammates? What are they like? Uh, can they handle it? Is, is it? is it too much for them, or do they take it all on their stride? 
just you get to know about personalities and yeah. knowing then if if it comes to a big game that he can say, yeah, I'm throwing you straight in, I think you're ready for it, I think he can handle it, you've got the temperament for it. Yeah, the other thing that came out in that Nathan interview with Jack Byrne was the text from Stephen Kenny, yeah. you know, and, and not the fact that he did it, but the fact that it had such an impact. Like Jack Byrne said, I can't explain the impact that it had on me, but it really did have an impact. And that is the managerial, man management skills that we've heard people talk about that are intangible with Kenny. The players who played with him, who who got on with him over a long period of time, it seems would go to war for him pretty quickly. And um, I should really stop using language like that about sport because it doesn't matter anymore. But anyway, um, like that man management skill that he has is something that has clearly come across. And you know, I'm sure I'm sure he's in contact with all these players who are making their debuts. And and um, the other thing that was announced was a uh, record season ticket sales. Yeah for the Republic of Ireland. I don't know how long we've been keeping track of this, but it's it's very interesting. It's like the the home slate of games this year is not great, is it? No, well, obviously you've got the the Belgium game later on this month, but there is something, I, I think we've seen it with the start of the, the new League of Ireland season as well. There is some sort of, a, like there's a buzz about Irish football where it's maybe the fact that there's there's new people in the FAI. It's a, it gives hope, but also, like, look, there's always been a massive interest in football in this country, and I think now, if it feels like there there could be a change, whether the League of Ireland gets the investment that it needs and deserves, then that can kick on. And obviously, there's an excitement about the international team because there's a lot of young players that have now been capped, and that only bodes well for the future. And the Nations League is obviously something that Stephen Kenny has targeted and then wants to bring it on into the the European campaign. So, there, yeah, there is a real excitement about it. And you could see even when the when the crowds came back for the last few games, just th this team is, or the, the the fans are behind this team and behind Stephen Kenny. Yeah, uh, and look, the, the players coming through uh, at that age group, those kind of 17 to 21-year-olds, they're very promising it's just it feels like it might be a bit too early for them or maybe it's not maybe this is the campaign where they all smash their way to prominence at international level and you know there's a, a good time coming but it, it it's hard because we don't want to put too much pressure on them and yet we also really desperately need them to deliver quickly yeah exactly and it, it goes back to what I said earlier even about like the, the whole strange situation of the start of Stephen Kenny's tenure where there was nobody there and players were getting ruled out of games left, right and centre because of COVID and just pretty much anything that could go wrong was going wrong and towards the end of the World Cup qualifiers it looked like we turned that corner where we were starting to score goals, we were playing some nice football, the crowds were back, there was a, there was a buzz and yeah, that, that was kind of what Stephen Kenny was aiming for was just to blood all these players and then Obviously, to be, he would have liked to have got some more positive results in, in the campaign, but he always said it was about being stronger for the, the European Championship qualifiers. So that's where we're at, but it looks like we're on an upward curve, and it's probably no surprise then that all these people want season tickets. Will we go back to the Premier League? Yeah, you were watching Burnley last night? Yeah, actually, speaking of Irish players, um, Nathan Collins actually came on in the game because Ben Mee went off injured fairly looked innocuous at the time he just came in for a slide and tackle to uh, dispossess Pats and Daka but soldiered on for about 10 minutes even went up for a corner and then he couldn't get back and it's like right you're on Nathan Collins and Collins did did okay uh, Burnley, uh, Burnley were doing what Burnley do they were blocking shots and you know I, th I thought they would have success with set pieces given how bad Leicester have been they've conceded from 18 set pieces this season but they um, probably just didn't get enough corners, Burnley. And then Brendan Rodgers has the luxury in the 72nd minute of being able to say to James Madison and Jamie Vardy, on you go. Interesting enough, Tielemans came off. and Another game where he wasn't great. And obviously a lot of talk about where he's going to be next season. And maybe that's what we're seeing with him, that the, the head is, is thinking elsewhere. I've but heard you make the case that he might be a Virgil van Dijk where it's grand. He's so good that he'll be able to bounce back yeah. straight away. Yeah, because that that was something like you know people say if this is the way he is because he wants to get a move away you know people would question the character of a player but that was said about Van Dijk where he tried to get him he got his move away from Celtic then he wanted to get his move away from Southampton 
and some people said, well, you know, what's going to happen when he's unhappy at Liverpool? Or he, you know, he might think he wants to move away. And, I mean, none of that has happened. He's obviously been sensational and n nobody ever talks about Van Dijk leaving Liverpool. Is Tielemans that good? Uh, he's, he's not going to be a game changer for a, a club the way Van Dijk has been for Liverpool, but he certainly is a very good player. He's technically very good, has a goal in him and will complement plenty of the top teams in the Premier League. Um, who knows, maybe he has his eye on a move outside the Premier League. I'm sure there would be plenty of teams in the in Europe that would be quite happy to have him in their midfield. In terms of the what it did for the relegation scrap, you, you were kind of thinking with 20 minutes ago, Everton are going to be in the... They were in the bottom three in the As Things Stands table until Madison scored and then Vardy scored. But there's some big games this weekend. Obviously, Tottenham are coming... Um, off the, the disappointment of last night, they play Everton next Monday. So Everton will know going into that game where they are, obviously. Leeds, first game for Jesse Marsh is away to Leicester, and maybe it's a bad time from there because it looks like Vardy's going to be... You'd imagine Brendan Rodgers will put him straight back in. Madison has been excellent. Um, I'm not sure why he didn't start him. Um, Maybe he was carrying a knock, but he scored two great goals in the Conference League last week for, for Leicester. So Leicester needed that win. That was their first win of 2022 in the league. So, you know, top half finish, maybe win the Europa Conference League. There's still a few teams in there, though, that will give them problems because they haven't been great in Europe. In, in terms of Burnley, they look like the only team in the bottom three that can get out. Mm. Um, and... Last night's a bit of a disaster for that, though, isn't it? They're the games that, like, so they put in really good performances against Chelsea, unlucky against Liverpool, good against Man United, yeah. like games where they're not supposed to pick up points. But against Leicester, who are not in free fall but are having a down season, yeah. you think, okay, this is it. Like, go and win this. Yeah, uh, and I did feel that Burnley would have enough to get a point out of it where they could just. Uh, that was Leicester's first clean sheet away from home in the league this season as well. So. Burnley, you mentioned Chelsea there. They obviously drew at Stamford Bridge. They actually play Chelsea at Turf Moor on Saturday afternoon. So um, another game to watch as well this weekend in terms of the the fight for survival is you've got Norwich and Brentford. Mm. Which Brentford leads us who Burnley are eyeing up, not Everton. Yeah. Now, saying that though, Christian Eriksen came off the bench last week in the defeat to Newcastle Not and good. showed glimpses. There was a lovely ball where he, he played first time and you wonder, could he be the player that just gives Brentford that bit of a, a spark that gets them going again? Um, because it looked like they'd be okay. I, I didn't pick them to go down at the start of the season. I just thought they're a bit of an unknown quantity, a bit like Sheffield United were when they came up and... They have a certain way of playing. They'd be quite tough to beat in their own patch. And that's the way it started. But teams maybe have worked them out a bit. Also, just as the season goes on, you start picking up injuries and it's uh, it just becomes a bit of a slog. And the more games you lose, obviously, the confidence has taken a bit of a hit. So maybe Ericsson could be the player to turn it around for them. Hard to know what is going to happen with Leeds. Um, you know, they've, they've 12 games to save. And in terms of getting rid of Bielsa... They've got rid of him at the end of the tough run of games where you, I kind of wondered if you could see out the Spurs game, then you were going into games where you think, right, they can actually start winning a few of these. But um, obviously Leeds decided enough is enough and now it's uh, it's a time for Jesse Marsh. How, think, how do you get out of a Marcelo Bielsa thinking team with 12 games to go? The only positive for, for Leeds fans is Jesse Marsh would... like the players that they have will suit the way that he wants to play. But he'll have to tweak things. This whole man-for-man -man thing, that's gone. Leeds played Brentford on the final day of the season. Yeah. Uh, my money's on that being possibly a, a relegation off. Could be. I know Burnley play Newcastle yeah, as well in the I, last Newcastle day. Will definitely be I think safe. Newcastle will be all right. And I, I, do, I would definitely have Burnley ahead of uh, Brentford and Leeds on current form. Yeah. Um, may maybe on paper if Leeds get their full team back but they won't have their full team back by the end of the season it changes things yeah I mean there's very little talk about Bamford yeah. or Phillips so you wonder are they going to play again this season that's it Bamford I, I don't know I mean maybe maybe Jesse Marsh will be a bit more up front um, where but then again Bielsa is usually he's, he's quite honest when, when he's asked questions he would be he'd no problem telling you but the 
you wouldn't worry about Everton, no? Not with the quality that they have, I, I think, anyway. And, and I think that they have got a win in the last couple of weeks. I think yeah. just a win for what that does for a relegation threatened team is just like a rocket fuel. And of course, they've had a disappointing result since then. And they looked better against Manchester City, which is definitely something they'll cling to. But Brentford and Leeds just can't get a win at the moment. No. Like They just can't get three points on the board. And that's if, they, if you just get one of them, then away you go. But it's just hard to see how the two of them win games at the moment so I'd be very worried I think Everton and Newcastle are just cut above yeah. that, that crew at the moment and then it's it's a true horse race I think for that one yeah, spot absolutely. I think Burnley yeah. are better than the other two yeah, I think Norwich are done even though Norwich are obviously playing Liverpool tonight in the FA Cup and Dean Smith has pretty much said like his all eyes are on this weekend which goes back to what I was saying about certain clubs just can't have a proper crack at the, the FA Cup they don't feel they can because Look, we saw it even last night with Spurs. Spurs put out their, their strong eleven, but they couldn't back up the performance from the other day. So that seems to be an issue under Conte where they can't put in decent back-to-back performances. So does that go... To, to, is that to do with the intensity he wants them to play Maybe, with? What do you think? What, what's your what's your theory? Like, is, There is a possibility that it's to do with conditioning for what he wants to do and what his style of play is. But what it really is... is I, I never understand how at this point when the science is so good that conditioning is better for one team than another. Yeah, I don't like you can be as well conditioned as you want, but if you're playing two games at high intensity in a week, obviously the second game is going to take its toll a bit more. And when he won the league with Chelsea, one thing he had in his favor was he had no European football that season because they'd been so bad the season before with Mourinho and obviously um Hiddink had had come in as well like so it's uh yeah, it, it it appears that would be one of the concerns. Also, as well, you factor in that you know Spurs, you, like we've known for for years that nothing surprises you with Spurs anymore. The fact that they could follow up a, a great win over Man City with a defeat at Burnley. But the encouraging thing is they're st- they're creating chances in those games. Yeah. So. Uh, they've what they've six days to recover for that game against Everton on Monday night. Yeah, and, and it's I, not it's not a bad fixture to get right. No, and I I just wondered with Everton. I just I I wouldn't worry about them going down, but I just wondered what it would be like psychologically to drop into the bottom three at this stage of the let's season. Let's see, let's see. Hopefully, so we'll get a chance to see. If, if Burnley like. Burnley need to get a draw or better against Chelsea on Saturday for that to happen. I, I can't see that happening. All right, we've got to go. Feel good stuff. Great to have you back. Thanks a million. Uh, OTBM is brought to you live each morning by Gillette Labs for an effortless finish to your day.